Welcome back to the programme. Another call that came in. This, I think, is a rather witty one. Marion, what a contrast. An intelligent night owl and now a bird brain tweeter at 4am in the White House. That wonderful, sincere, intelligent Cody is only handing cakes to those uh, fired with fury gang that Trump hired and fired. Great interview. Well, thank you very much indeed uh, for that. Endless stuff coming in on the cost of hospitals, which you can well understand. But I'm going to uh, move abroad now. On the line is Sarah Morris. She's been correspondent for France 24 to tell us about overnight developments in the investigations into the terrorist attacks on Thursday. Sarah, can you clear this up for me? The police are now saying that contrary to earlier reports, that the driver of the van may still be on the run. That's absolutely right. Initially, they had thought uh, that the man had, who drove that van in Barcelona uh, was actually gunned down in Cambrils and that he was this 17-year-old Moroccan. And now they say, they think, they're working on the hypothesis uh, that the man is a 22-year-old Moroccan, part of the same cell, but he's called Yaunis Abu Yaqub. And uh, that means essentially that attacker is still at large. They're really focusing their attention on a house in the south of Catalonia um, where they say that a domestic gas explosion, it was at least treated as a domestic gas explosion on Wednesday night, very late in the evening. It blew up the house, part of the part of the house and the surrounding houses. And uh, they say that that was probably linked to the Barcelona attacks. They think a cell was hiding out there and uh, may have been uh, producing explosives and planning their operations. And uh, these police sources are saying this morning uh, that the attack they were planning could have been far bigger even uh, than the attacks we saw on Thursday, uh, that they had to scramble because they felt they had attracted attention through this explosion to improvise that attack or by running people over uh, with the hired vans. But those initial three hired vans were going to be used to blow up three key locations. And one of them, according to El Español, which is a news um, website here, uh, was going to be the Sagrada Familia. That oh, yes. Re- mm, really emblematic cathedral, unfinished uh, cathedral uh, by Anthony uh, Gaudi. And that would have really um, been uh, exactly what the attackers uh, wanted to capture the attention of the world. Uh, which they would have too. Um, they certainly would. The, the, I know the word iconic is used ridiculously uh, often, but I was listening to somebody saying that they're looking for iconic places. You know, that Las Ramblas could be described as such and certainly uh, Gaudi's construction uh, could be regarded as such as well, rather than say, and this is a question, airports? Uh, exactly. It, it looks as if what they want is is the biggest media attention possible. And the Ramblers, um, we know that tourists, tens of thousands of tourists go down there every day. Uh, the uh, Sagrada Familia is supposed to attract 20 million people a year who go and at least look at it, even if they don't go inside it. And the nationalities that have been vo- involved in this uh, these tragedies um, on Thursday uh, and Friday, they have uh, 35 different nationalities. Uh, we've had uh, people flying over from uh, the UK, from Canada, from Australia, Belgium, France, going to really try and find out if their uh, family members and loved ones actually survived this attack and uh, really to get as much information they can. And there's pretty anxious hours at the moment, Marianne, because a lot of people simply can't find their relatives right. on the hospital lists. Uh, just one final thing. I gather that there is, there is not that second generational disaffected um, Arab youths or Muslim youths in Spain in, in a fashion that existed in Belgium and France. 
That, I think that's right, uh, Marion. I think that uh, the second uh, immigration in Spain is much newer as a phenomenon. And so there aren't the second and third disaffected yeah. uh, youths that we've seen, the ghettos that have been created in places like the banlieues in, in Paris. Um, that said, there's more immigration in places like Catalonia. And we'll have to look very carefully when we get the final details about who these attackers were as to how long they had lived here, uh, what yeah. their backgrounds were. They seem to be incredibly young, between 17 and 22. They were ridiculously they, young. Yeah, yeah. And they seem to all be Moroccans, but uh, there are... Um, they do seem to have been living in Catalonia. We don't know exactly how long all of them um, had been there. It looks like a group of Moroccans may have met in Catalonia right. and then decided to, uh, to, to do these kind of attacks. OK. And that, mm. Well, listen, we, we leave it there for the moment. And thank you very much indeed for that. I'm now going to talk to Owen Curry about that from the perspective of the traveller. But I forgot to give you the second lyric. So I'll do that before I talk to you, Owen. Uh, <clears throat> a scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride trying to holler at me. Uh, number three coming up shortly. Now, you were listening there to that, own. We have a great addiction to going to Barcelona. It's a very different uh, kind of target, um, Mary, and it's very much tourism central. The way city breaks and city tourism works in Europe, there are three that are regarded as untouchable. They're so far ahead that nobody will go near them and that's um, Paris, London and, and Rome. There's a second division of about three, which is Amsterdam, Barcelona and Copenhagen. And interestingly enough, uh, Barcelona wouldn't even have featured in that till the 90s, till the 92 Olympics. Um, it transform the city. It's one of those places that combines uh, the culture, the Gaudi architecture. It also combines with that, uh, the beach. Um, but it really got to itself almost that nightlife, that culture. That's what they were attacking on Thursday night. Uh, Los Ramblas, the plaza culture, five o'clock in the evening. The day trippers are coming to the end of the day. They're sitting, having their coffee, people watching. Yeah, lovely the first time. of the nightlifers yeah. are coming. It's a terrific city. It's buzzing. Even the name Barcelona gets people smiling. Yeah. And Los Ramblas is obviously the capital of that. It's quite interesting that two weeks ago, the first we saw of um, what was happening in Barcelona was that quite unusually and air airport delays but Barcelona was at the heart of that story and at the heart of the anti-tourism story thanks to the mayor they elected two years ago but in Barcelona airport they started screening bags as they left the airport caused havoc within the terminal tourists were already cranky and they were started complaining but that suggests uh, as uh, from Sarah's report tip there off. was some sort of tip off going on and they were already watching out for that two weeks ago airport harder target as you uh, outlined than one of the tourist locations what we've seen though is is very much um, if you're going for tourism Barcelona is a place to go rather than Madrid which was attacked in 2004 if the yeah, international people have forgotten that 191 people it killed was colossal. it yeah. was colossal and it brought down the government at the time the election came in a week, a couple of weeks later if you remember the Spanish government Im immediately blamed it and it rebounded very heavily on them it was uh, coalition allies related to the Iraq war but the um, international community how it responds to Barcelona and how Barcelona responds to this really is important in the coming weeks because if 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 this will be a goal uh, scored for uh, the people who perpetrated this yeah. if it affects international tourism Oddly enough, Marion, this was the year that Spain was going to overtake France as the world's favourite tourist destination, largely because France had slowed and f um, because of the attacks there. And Spain is increasing massively, 11% overall. And from Ireland, uh, the figures that came out last week show we're up 18% to of what is already our favourite tourist destination, 1.7 million people. 1.7 million? From our little island go to Spain every year and... Oddly, a lot of uh, displacement, North Africa, Turkey, people started yeah. looking back to Spain, how the reaction in the coming weeks to, of international travellers will decide, you know, if this, w we really need to send a message out that um, Barcelona, we stand by Barcelona, stand by Spain in the Rar of Mead and continue to travel there. And uh, my mantra, people will have heard me say before, uh, there are dangers when you travel 
but the chances of being caught in a political act by Irish people is are minuscule. What kills, and 200 of us die every year abroad, what kills us abroad are the same things that kill us at home, the car crashes, the drownings and the heart attacks we pack in our suitcase as we go, the heart conditions. So it's not unsafe to travel and I would urge people to continue and the tourists to continue to travel. I'd say there are a fair few people now that have bookings for around now and next week and wondering what in the name of the Lord will we do? First of all, you won't get compensation if you cancel. Fear is not uh, fear is not enough of a reason to cancel and get your compensation. What we've seen uh, is when Brussels and Paris happened, individual airlines moved and allowed 48-hour cancellation. That was really a customer service thing that they did. They could feel, see and feel the real fear about bringing a family, for instance, to yes. a place that's just been attacked. And that that really is not legislated for uh, we could see changes in that in coming years but at the moment if you're afraid it's not enough to get your money back Right, yeah I suppose but I mean nobody wants to play chicken or gamble with them um, with serious matters like that I presume the day or two after an event like that is quite possibly the safest time of all to be there And uh, Not being um, flippant about it but we have a tradition in Ireland where travel agents and tour operators will tell you that the day after a bomb goes off in Bali or someone, something they will get phone calls saying are there bargains <laughs> <laughs> we like we, you know after immediately after the attack uh, prices tend to go down not so much in cities the pattern by the way for you know this is very serious hotelier talk now here but the way uh, hoteliers see patterns and we don't have a lot of data we've only four or five big city attacks in Europe is that it takes about three months to recover but they do tend not to drop the prices they tend to uh, see lower occupancy for about three four months and then it returns to normal Barcelona is a very different side of city, type of city. It's a very tourist city. And the other thing, you know, the very fact there were 35 different nationalities yeah. among the victims shows yeah. how different it is. The other thing is the um, fiestas, the Gracia, the great Festival of Grace, which is a huge, a really f- wonderful event, had drawn people in from the uh, coastal resorts, Salo, the Costa Dorada, from the, up the north as far as Girona, brings people into the city. So it was a cel- one of those great celebratory events and the Spanish festivals are just amazing. They really know how to celebrate and it was striking the heart of Spanish culture to do that. Yeah, the funny thing about it is you hear people saying it's an attack on our way of life. It is too. I was listening to somebody yesterday saying that now in Nice that they have all these barriers and somebody else talking about police around the place in Paris and more barriers being constructed. So... It is actually changing that way of life, which was a very relaxed, um, free way of life. The events I went to in Paris, in France this year, the big tourism event had snipers on on roofs around us. You know, it does, uh, you know, when you see, when you bringing armed police into the front line and then you have that thing that happens, everyone who's given a bit of power and a bit of uniform where they're sometimes rude uh, to, you know, it does turn people off and, you know, it's not criticise them but it's just one of those things that happens Um, it is restricting uh, access to major tourist attractions I'd imagine the uh, big tourist attractions all across Spain will now have much more there was already security in place in Barcelona quite strict security getting into the cathedrals and the the major uh, but the other thing that will happen as sure as night follows day is that the airport security across Spain will now be stepped up to an even more uh, higher level. It was already causing delays. It was already causing complaints because of this uh, regulation since April that everybody um, e- leaving, entering and leaving the Schengen region has to be scanned in and scanned out like you would a workplace. The passport has to be scanned as whereas before people, some of the people were waved through. Yeah, um, That will impact... Uh, Unevenly, the bigger airports, uh, Barcelona had been a problem, but the bigger airports, Malaga, places like that had not been problematic. It tends to be where there's a very small trickle of tourists in winter and a big rush in summer. Right. And the Irish are great dispersers. We've more than 30 routes into um, it's Spain and we will end up, a lot of us go to the smaller seasonal airports where we like I like Spain. those smaller yeah, seasonal yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Bilbao, Santander, Vigo, uh, Santiago 
look at the Compostela, they're four, just four, and they're all along the north. We're one of the biggest nations for taking the Camino because we love North Spain in a way that some of the other markets don't rush rush to. But they're the ones without uh, without the number of gates to see passengers through its security and without the staffing because it's it, for nine months of the year they're very quiet and there will be a, a more airport delays, more problems. Um, a, this is so cheerful. Well, and uh, also with Lucifer <laughs> boiling you, you talk about people being <laughs> bad tempered. Yeah, could, people will be their journey there and the journey back uh, will make us a little bit cranky. But you know, <laughs> you, I'm of an age to remember when uh, things were, you know, passports and customs and everything that was much more invasive, mm. and. The reality is that the, while the pendulum is swinging back a little bit in that direction, Marion, the technology um, of, is moving so far forward that we will be in a situation in a couple of years where our passport will be scanned before we've even reached the boots and he will then decide, uh, yeah. you know, who to interview <laughs> and who to not. But uh, the, 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 I will not, I'm not saying curtail your travel in any sense. Keep travelling and keep go, uh, going for it because um, the, there's right. so much out there and we're very, the, the rest of Spain, not the south that we know so well, the rest of Spain has so much to offer right. as well as the south. Just before I, I leave you um, or you leave us, I gather Brexit is really having an impact on tourism here from Britain. You can see the numbers uh, dropping, um, the airport usage down about 3 4% on the British routes. This is, could be a self-fulfilling prophecy, Marion. What happens when airlines see their profit margins go down on particular routes, uh, they start pulling the routes. It'd be very, very quickly, uh, we could see Ryanair closing a lot of those regional routes. What keeps parts of Ireland Irish tourism going is not the big London Heathrow flights, Stansted flights. It's the fact that Leeds, Bradford, Newcastle, all of those places are, you know, if you're looking, if you're sitting there, you don't have that many options for a weekend at the same number of options. So right. Dublin looms up. And the other thing that happens is the parts of the country which are dependent uh, most on Britain are the ones that are least visited that need tourism most. The Leitrims, Longfords, Roscommons, the coach loads of elderly British people who don't really have the money to stay in the more higher priced Wild Atlantic Way hotels end right. up there and we end up with the old Carlsberg thing they, they, uh, it reaches parts of the of tourism that other parts don't reach <laughs> that's what Britain is, is British right. tourism is doing and they're the ones most susceptible to it it's a big problem and you can see the debate being ramped up right. all the time yeah. Well if you take I think it's 28% in all change in the value of sterling to euro. Like it's it's big. It's a big change in value for your pound. Anyway, the, the get out of jail clause for Ireland is the six counties and the fact that they were still in the sterling zone. So everyone in Antrim, Derry, Tyrone, they should be ramping up the, the option of non-euro to holidays and yeah. trying to build that up. That right. would really be a, a great opportunity for them. OK, uh, Owen Corey, uh, editor of Travel Thank you, Extra. Thank you very, very much indeed. And we will take a break. Podcast The Marion Finucane Show at rte.ie slash radio.